there are three things you must never do if you don't want to lose your miracle. Three things. The first is sexual sin. When one commits sexual sin, the person may lose his or her miracle. Many people are not aware of this. Sex is not ordinary. Sex was created to be between a man and his wife and between no other person. Some people have not received their desired miracle because they engage in sexual sin. For one to commit sexual sin, the person must use the body. Sexual sins are committed with the body. And the Holy Spirit dwells inside that body. So what happens? He lives. If you read the book of Psalms chapter 51 verse 11, after King David committed sexual sin, he prayed in verse 11, he said, Oh God, take not thy Holy Spirit away from me. That is exactly what happens whenever one commits sexual sin. And listen, when the Holy Spirit departs from you, the person ceases to be a Christian. Romans chapter 8 verse 9 says, He who does not have the Spirit of Christ is none of his. Anyone who does not have the Holy Spirit is not a Christian. The Holy Spirit is what makes you a Christian. So when one loses it, anything can happen to that person. The devil may steal. You know, he has come to steal, kill, and destroy. He may not kill the person. He may steal the person's miracle. After stealing the miracle, the person will repent and ask, Father, forgive me. God will forgive. God is a good God. As God forgives, what happens? The Holy Spirit comes back. But the person had lost a miracle without knowing it. So after a while, the person prays again. Start from where I stopped before. God answers again. He releases a miracle. The devil makes the person fall into sin of fornication. The Holy Spirit departs. The devil strikes. The person can go around circle for years because of sexual sin. If you want to move forward after this great teaching and anointing of God in the house, avoid sexual sin. Some men are not millionaires today because of sexual sin. Some people are sick today because of sexual sin. You must reject it. Sex was created to be between a man and a wife. And listen to this. I would like you to know that sexual sin is not limited to when a man sleeps with a woman. Masturbation is a type of sexual sin. You must stop masturbation by all means. It is not good. Masturbation is actually an abomination. It's worse than a man sleeping with a woman. It's like homosexuality and lesbianism. They are the same in the same category. God detests it. Now, what makes a sexual act sin? It's not how you engage in the sexual act, but with whom you engage in the sexual act. Sex was created to be of to be between a man and his wife. When one engages in sex with someone else other than his spouse, it is sin. So you may say to me, Pastor, what are you saying? It's my body. Does it not belong to me? Don't I have the right to do what I want with my body? No, you don't. First, your body has been bought by the blood of Jesus Christ. It is no longer your body. Second, because you dwell in that body does not mean you have the right to do whatever you want to the body. For example, if somebody kills a person, it is seen as murder. Am I right? Do you know that he cannot kill yourself because he lives in that body? When one does that, God also sees it as murder. You don't have the right to do anything that is not proper to your body. So you don't have the right to engage in sexual sin with your body. Because it is your body, it does not mean you have the right to do whatever you want. Once you do it to your body, it will also be regarded as the same way it is regarded as when you do it with someone else. Sex was created to be between a man and his wife. You are not married to yourself. So when you engage in sexual sin with yourself, you are committing a sin. You are not married to yourself. It's actually an abomination. It's like sleeping with an animal. Because you ought not to. It's not proper that somebody should touch himself or herself and be happy about it. It's not proper. It is improper. It is too bad. Why should somebody be touching himself or herself? 
If you read the scripture, you know what Apostle Paul said? He said, instead of you to burn, it is better that you marry. From that scripture, it means that the only solution to burning is what? Getting married. Apostle Paul didn't say, instead of you to burn, it is better you marry or you masturbate. <laughs> Are you understand? He didn't say that. So the only solution to burning is getting married. That's what that scripture means. Getting married is the only solution to burning. Masturbation is not a substitute. You must never masturbate. Even people who masturbate know that it's not good because after masturbating, you feel that you have done something wrong. It is not good. You must never do it. You must stop by all means. When Jesus Christ came on earth, he changed the definition of sexual sin. You know what he said? He said, when you look at someone lustfully, you have committed sexual sin. That means lustful looking can be defined as sexual sin. Do you know that it, no one can ever masturbate without lusting? It is not possible. Before one can masturbate, the person must lust. It is the lust that will lead to the masturbation. If not, the person can't succeed. So, anyhow you want to look at it, masturbation is a sin. It is a detestable sin. It is an abomination. It must be rejected. You must teach people to stop it. Never you encourage it. It is too bad. All forms of sexual sin must be stopped. Not just